Bristol City Council holds a, a tremendous amount of data about properties, about individuals, etc., about the citizens of Bristol. And uh, we need to keep that data uh, obviously very secure. It's very important. The council runs uh, business critical applications such as its websites and a lot of sensitive information. It, it, security is, is paramount. ICT services are taken by the users for granted, but without them, Bristol City Council could not function properly and could not deliver the critical services that it needs to deliver to the citizens of Bristol. Quite a lot of its business depends on the data centre running. Council House is never going to be given up by the council, it's always going to stay in. So it was a good, a good idea to put the data centre in here. Well, we had a number of issues with moving the data centre back into the council house, not the least of which was the building. Um, the building is a listed building and consequently English Heritage have a big say in, in what we can and can't do in the building. The location of the current data centre is below ground. We also have a moat at the front of the council house which um, had in the past leaked on occasions and so consequently when we were looking at the design of the new data centre we wanted something which basically was, was watertight. The council chamber is, is right above us. They'd actually complained about the hand dryers in the toilets, which were on the sort of level that we're at. The Bristol City Council was very interested in energy efficiency. At the time, it put in a bid for the Green City of Europe. I'd like to think we're a, we're a demanding client. We had um, discussions uh, with a number of companies uh, about the design of, of the data centre. FutureTech were the only company who really put the effort into the, the energy efficiency and they gave us the figures which allowed us to show that the energy efficient design they produced was cost effective and in the long run over the 10 year life cheaper than the alternatives. And the, 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 the use of the, uh, the moat to show the data centre was, was very important and that was part of the innovative design that, that FutureTech came up with. We use a water cooling from the moat and we're using a, a heat exchanger so in fact we're not having to use heat pumps to power the water going back into the moat and that is backed up by very efficient dry air coolers so it, it's like a car radiator, it pumps the air through. The reason we had to go for very efficient dry coolers was to keep the noise down for the council rooms which are above here. What FutureTech did was to actually give us very quiet and efficient fans and we put in an extra fan for resilience but so that we could run the fans more slowly. So we, we actually had some very tight constraints from that point of view and also the fact that this is a grade two star listed building, we couldn't have air coolers spread all the way around the building. It's a modular construction which is hermetically sealed. We're actually standing 40 centimetres off the ground so uh, the water would probably cut out the main power to the building before it actually damaged the data centre. FutureTech came up with the ability to listen to what, what we really wanted, to listen to what things needed to be considered. The data centre design includes power monitoring. We monitor the power going into the data centre and right from the, the power box on the wall. We also monitor the power being used by the servers so we can calculate the PUE quite easily. After a bit of stabilisation we've now got this down to a PUE of 1.16 which is very efficient indeed. FutureTech, uh, they, they maintain our data centre, they are proactive rather than reactive and, and that's very comforting. In uh, December 2009 we were um, recognised under uh, the Data Centre Dynamics Award scheme whereby they recognised the innovation that we'd used in, in cooling the data centre which pleased us greatly.